So these days, adding camera movement is actually pretty easy and, uh, and affordable. Even if you're working on like a really low budget, but you want to get really nice, smooth shots, uh, thanks to gimbals these days, it's fairly easy to achieve. Now, uh, one of the reasons also why I actually chose the Siri anamorphic lenses is because these are the smallest anamorphic lenses on the market today. Uh, and that, that means that the whole setup is a lot smaller and lighter. Uh, and of course, you know, the bigger the lenses or the bigger the camera, you're gonna need bigger support gear, whether it's tripods or big gimbals or cranes, or maybe even a really large dolly. So definitely the size of the, the setup uh, is something you should take into consideration and bigger isn't always better. Wow! So the way we're going to move the camera also depends on the type of movement you, uh, that you want. If, for example, you're looking for a smooth and very subtle movement, then I would recommend using a dolly or maybe even a slider, and, which is going to give you a very stable base. Uh, it's also going to allow you to be very exact with the motion. Now, if you want the camera to move very fast and smooth, but over long distances, then uh, probably a gimbal would be the, the best tool. Of course, you can also just move the camera by hand-holding it. This kind of a setup is obviously the fastest, easiest, uh, plus the, gives the camera operator a lot more freedom to move around with the actors. Uh, so you don't always need to spend money to add camera movement in your shots. Uh, you really just think of the kind of emotion you want to create. Now, I would say the biggest part of deciding if you want to move the camera and how to do it is really the story itself. So what does the shot require? Uh, how can you maybe emphasize something in that scene that you want the audience to pay attention to? Uh, I mean, you can actually even create movement in your film just by editing a bunch of static shots. Uh, we could, for example, just put the camera on a tripod, get a, the shot here of a girl sitting, uh, talking on the phone, then we can get another shot, which is a close-up, uh, and then we can have a quick cutaway of the gun. Uh, finally, we have another shot which shows the victim. If you really want the audience to pay attention to something, then adding just a slight camera movement can be a great way of doing it. Look at this simple shot of the gun while it's a, a static version. Uh, and then, for example, when we have the camera slightly zooming in, which is done in post-production. Or an even better way to do the same effect is to actually move the camera in 3D space. Uh, by moving in closer on the gun, we are telling the audience to pay attention. This is important. Uh, of course, at the same time, you don't want to just move the camera pointlessly because it just looks neat. Uh, or cut away to things that aren't really important. By doing things like that, you can really confuse and tire your audience because you're essentially telling them, here, pay attention, and you get them thinking without really any kind of a payoff at the end. Uh, if you do that too many times in your film, your audience is gonna hate your film and you. So in our film, I actually want the camera to kind of, like I said, start a little bit wider and it's gonna come in for a nice close-up of the girl as we kind of start seeing the, the blood and the bruises that she has uh, and we kind of learn more about what happened to her. Uh, now, like I said, there's lots of different ways to achieve a moving shot. For us, I, I want the shot at the beginning to be fairly smooth, but very quickly to start kind of looking a little bit jittery, a little bit nervous because that's what I want the scene to feel like. So it makes perfect sense to actually have Ketak handhold the camera while he's just being uh, pushed on a, on a stable platform, which in this case is a, a wheelchair. And we're gonna basically rehearse this, you know, make sure that we're, we're, we're getting perfectly the position of the camera, of the dolly, our actress knows you know, the, the, the framing and all that stuff. Once we're happy with that, that's when uh, we're gonna actually move to doing the lighting. So that's something very important. I would say you don't wanna work on lighting unless you know already what your framing, your angles are. Uh, because uh, really lighting is very dependent on that. Join me in part 3 where I talk about lighting for anamorphic and in particular how to use the bokeh and lens flares to create a surreal look. <laughs> <laughs>